Hello, everyone. My name is Mariana Catapani. Uh, I work for a Brazilian NGO called Wild Animal Conservation Institute, and I'm doing my postdoc with Chester Zoo. The research I will show you is part, it was part of my PhD research about superstitions involving giant anteaters in Brazil. So, imagine you are one of the first human beings and you are walking with your kid and you see a lion. And you don't know what a lion is, so you take your kid over to play with it and the lion eats your kid. So you go home and you are very sad. And five years later, you are walking again with your new kid and you see a lion far away. This time, you hide with your kid and you both survive. So you come out, you, are, you start walking with your kid again, and suddenly a bird flies over your head unexpectedly. Your kid drops dead. Again, you go home, very sad, but you make a promise to yourself. When you have a new kid, you are going to make sure that you are hiding from lions, and you are hiding also if you see a bird flying over. Causal reasoning has played a large part in human evolution, and due to that, we are extremely sensitive to coincidences, always searching for patterns and meanings behind the causes of success and failure of events. Yet, this human natural tendency to infer causality often leads people to generate unnecessary causal explanations for things that are better under understood as resulting of random variation. Maybe, if in your story you had used your slow, more rational and logical process of thinking, you probably had understood that you are right about the lion, but the bird had nothing to do with your kid's death. This story I had told you helped us understand how the individual superstitions arise, but most of them, or many of them, are shared by groups of people. Although there are several definitions of superstitions, I am referring here, to those beliefs or practices that certain facts or events or animals can bring good or bad luck, okay? But why am I talking about this here? Often these beliefs are not just abstract ideas, but they can manifest through real behaviors, resulting in the direction persecution of several animal species. Uh, but little is known about the crucial factors that contribute to people's adherence to such beliefs. I mean, uh, how does this transmission from, from one person to another happen? What do people take as evidence for accepting these beliefs, and how these became, become persecution. So this is the giant anteater, an insectivorous mammal that can reach two meters long, has a body mass greater than 30 kilos, and exhibits some peculiar morphological characteristics. I have been working with this species for the last 15 years, and unfortunately, in some places of its distribution, associated with the belief that it brings bad luck, there is also the belief that if you kill the animal or if you hit uh, in its snout enough, this bad luck will be released. So I investigated superstitious beliefs toward giant anteaters to compare the relative importance of social demographic contextual and psychological factors underpinning people's adherence to superstitious beliefs and to evaluate what were the main implications of holding such beliefs to the people adhering to them and also to the species involved. So I used a mixed method of design um, incorporating 88 semi-structured and 171 structured face-to-face -face interviews. This study took place in the southern portion of the Brazilian Pantanal in Mato Grosso do Sul state. And the qualitative... Sorry. Okay. So the qualitative results were analyzed with template analysis, and this figure summarized the final coding template. Um, covering superstitious beliefs about giant anteaters, the context, the psychological factors, the contextual factors related, the implications for people and for the species. And then I used a structured questionnaire to quantify all these variables. <laughs> 
So my main results, 40% of the interviews held at last one bad luck superstitious belief about giant anteriors. My regression analysis suggested that age, gender, and schooling had little to no effect on superstitions, but three factors determined superstitions regarding species. The frequency that a person see a giant anterior, the social influence, and the factual knowledge. So, encountering giant anteriors more often made a person less prone to having superstitions about the species. So, suppose you are living in the rural Pantanal and you have already heard about uh, that giant anteaters bring misfortune. Thus, somehow, this information uh, will, be in your, will be available in your memory. If you happen to see a giant anteater and then something bad happens to you, it's enough for you You do this connection between these two co occurring between uh, but unrelated events and assimilate these beliefs. This psychological process is known as confirmatory bias. But instead, if you see giant anteaters often and nothing bad happens, your early knowledge will be disconfir disconfirmed. And indeed, frequently, uh, I heard from interviews sometimes, oh, several times uh, I have seen giant anteater and nothing bad happens to me, so I don't believe it anymore. So this find is important because also uh, contribute to our understanding of the holding of superstitions involve rare and elusive animals. Since the rarity of an encounter decreased the likelihood of this confirmatory evidence. Second, individuals were more likely to adhere to giant anteater superstitions when they mentioned knowing people who believe in it, especially when these people were close to them and interacted with them frequently. And these findings are aligned with the social pine impact theory. But the critical factor predicting adherence to superstitions was people's low factor knowledge, knowledge about the species. But when I say uh, factual knowledge here, I'm referring to the misunderstandings contributing to the evidence supporting superstitions. Misunderstandings about the biology and the behavior of these species. But several of the anteater's body features differ from those of other species. For example, anteaters do not have sexual dimorphism, as other mammals do. So male testicles are intra-abdominal, so males and females look the same. And because of that, some people misinterpret what they see and attribute to fun the function of penetration to other organs or body structures. In our case, 56 of the interviews believed that anteaters were produced with their tongues. 36% stated that there are, there are only females in this species. These and other misunderstandings about giant anteaters ended up surrounding the animal with elements of mystery and uncertainty, which suggests that people tend to endorse superstitions beliefs not only in uncertain and stressful situations, as the anthropologist, anthropologist Malinovsky uh, already noted, but also uh, in face of uncertain creatures that are not well understood. This finding may help explain the maintenance of superstitious beliefs about other animals with unusual physical or behavioral traits. And people strive to understand, predict, and control their environments in order to minimize negative outcomes. These uncertain situations or creatures threaten our perception of control. Regarding the implications of holding superstitions, most of those who held superstitions about the species declared to be worried, distressed, and anxious when the trigger situations happened, corroborating research on personal assessment that uncertain situations tend to threaten our perception of control, generating psychological discomfort and anxiety. And one way they feel they can take back control of the situation is doing something. It gives 
the illusion of controlling the situation. And in this case, about 95% of interviewees holding superstitions, beliefs, associated disbeliefs in some action performed by themselves to avoid these negative events from happening. About 10% stated their intention to hit giant antitery snouts to repel bad luck. This behavior exposes people to injury and risk and may negatively impact giant antitery conservation as is a sensitive area. Given the negative consequence of superstitions for both people and the species involved, we argue that it is essential to reduce the prevalence and strength of these beliefs wherever they are present. According to our findings, one way this can be done is by providing information that demystifies the main misunderstanding about the species. We wrote a children's book called The Incredible Giant Anteater, addressing key misunderstandings people have about them in Pantanal. Copies of the book were distributed to children in rural schools together with the teacher, teacher guidelines to help explain how to use the material. And our educator, Andrea Nasser, also included this content among the materials for teachers in the continuing education training course through the city governments of several municipalities in Mato Grosso do Sul state. Securing a future for this species will demand from conservationists a nuanced understanding of the interactions between wildlife and cultural belief systems. Thank you very much for listening.